So welcome, my name is David Bruce. I am president and CEO of FGI Industries. I'm joined by John Chen, our executive chairman, and uh, we'll get started. Really quick, our disclaimer on forward-looking statements. I'll breeze past this, obviously. Let's talk about the company. Uh, FGI Industries is a business-to-business uh, -business global supplier of kitchen and bath products. We were uh, part of a 30-year-old uh, company, Foremost Groups in, uh, Limited. We were the kitchen and bath division of the Foremost Groups company. They had a patio division, an indoor furniture division, and the kitchen and bath division. And kitchen and bath division was the one that was spun off and went public in January of this year. Our businesses primarily, primarily center around sanitary wear, which is 61% of our business, bath furniture, um, and our emerging other categories of our shower systems and kitchens. Uh, we play primarily in the repair and remodel segment. 80% of our business comes through that channel, uh, with new construction accounting for about 20%. As you can see, we are predominantly U.S. Uh, most of our volume is out of the U.S., 62%. However, we have about 38% coming internationally through, uh, from Canada and uh, Europe, primarily Germany. Private brands are the majority of our sales, or our owned brands are growing, is now 40%. We'll talk about that a little later. We distribute our sales through uh, several different channels, uh, mass retail, wholesale, commercial and e-commerce, and specialty shops. And the majority of our product is outsourced in, in China, Southeast Asia, and Mexico, uh, with 25% of our uh, product, primarily bathroom furniture, being sourced from our affiliated uh, parent company's manufacturing facility in Cambodia. We're very well positioned in the bath market. You may be familiar with names such as Masco, Toto, Elixil, uh, very high quality, mid to high price point uh, suppliers. Uh, but there's 60% of our industry is made up of very small fragmented suppliers that are uh, not really built to scale to grow out their business. Their quality level is not quite up to par compared to FGI. Uh, and we see ourselves on the upper right. We have a, a high quality offering with a uh, really good supply chain, great logistics systems, with an enormous white space for growth uh, out in front of us uh, as we'll, we'll get into more detail. The executive management team I touched upon, John Chen, our executive chairman, has been with the company almost four years, came from the investment management side of the business, was, was also a securities lawyer. Uh, myself, David Bruce, I've been with the company nearly 25 years now. I came from the home improvement business. And Perry Lin, our CFO, who couldn't be here today, uh, Perry came from uh, KPMG as an auditor and has been with FGI for 11 years. Let's talk about our durable competitive advantages. Uh, one of the greatest things we have is a diversified mix of product and market segments and sales channels. We like to say that we're spiderwebbed into our customers and into our sales channels with all the multiple product categories that we offer and the hundreds and hundreds of different SKUs and SKU sets that we have. We have a tradition of strong innovation. We have been a leading on-trend product developer, especially when we started off in our cabinetry business, now in our kitchen business, our emerging shower systems business. Uh, we have an, our motto is innovation, quality, and service, uh, and innovation has always been a lead trait at the company. Um, for example, we've been able to engineer products that are water saving, that were leading um, innovations in the industry with the water saving toilets. Uh, or also our Masa branded uh, electronic water saving toilets as well. One of the most important things we have is our decades long relationships with suppliers and customers globally. Um, our customers have been with us, many of them, for 30, 35 years. In addition to the deep relationships we have with our customers, we've been with many of our suppliers in Asia for many, many years, uh, these long term global manufacturing partners. COVID-19 was a great example of how well our, our uh, relationships are with our customers and our suppliers as we navigated through the very, very difficult times with global supply chain issues. Um, despite all of that, our business did very, very well and continued to grow. Additionally, there's many commercial barriers uh, to getting into this business, especially uh, where there's water exposure. There's lots of local, regional, and national product regulations that are required that are very expensive to get into for a startup company. Um, additionally, there's a lot of industry stability with low obsolescence risk with our product. Um, there's not a lot of technical and design evolution, and it's a very, very stable industry moving forward. This will show you a little bit about the diversified product and market segments. We sell from the good, better, best. We've been focusing on what we call mid-price plus, which would be better, best, uh, that you see on the screen, our Craft and Main contract and Jet Coat shower brands our very high-end Avenue sanitary wear and our custom 
covered bridge cabinet line. And you will see that the, as we move up the ladder, we're starting to compete with the, like, compete with the likes of uh, companies like Toto, Kohler, and Moen, for example. Really quick, our global business footprint. We have four locations in North America, our main office in East Hanover, New Jersey, all with distribution centers. Dusseldorf, Germany is the, uh, our European operation headquarters. And in Asia, two large support centers, one in Tangshan, China, and one in Taipei. This will just give you an example of some of the large and global customers that we serve. You may be familiar with some of them in the USA and Canada. In Europe, uh, primarily some of the largest retailers in Germany and just a handful of the e-commerce customers that we service. Let's talk about how we're going to drive long-term shareholder value. We're broken up into three key components. Let's talk about our BPC strategy first. We want to grow our brands, our products, and our product categories and our sales channels, and we'll get into a little bit of that in detail. We want to do this because we're going to focus on higher margin, higher quality, new sales opportunities within all our channels following our BPC strategy. Enhanced financial performance. We have ongoing initiatives to continue to boost profit margins. We're going to be implementing a new ERP system, for example, uh, very shortly that's going to help us from an operational efficiency standpoint. We're focused on re uh, return on capital discipline. Uh, we have cash flow and balance sheet management that is a strict focus of our financial department and our CFO, Perry, for example. Our capital deployment strategy. We want to reinvest in our core business with enormous evergreen opportunity and expansion that we see in the marketplace. We're also going to look at selective bolt-on acquisitions that may make sense, and we'll get into that in a little bit as well. And finally, talking about excess free cash flow for dividends and repurchases, we will look at that as time goes on, um, and that'll be part of our, our uh, future capital deployment strategy as well. What does that do? It all rolls up into what we call our long-term value creation formula. Well above industry uh, organic growth, uh, uh, material operating margin expansion, strong balance sheet and cash conversion, and smart capital deployment, which rolls up to double-digit earnings growth in the near to midterm. Let's talk about that BPC strategy. We'll talk about brands. Our own brand sales, as we showed earlier, have grown from zero to just about 40% um, in the last 11 years. We've just launched our Kraft and Main brand. Uh, we continue to develop Contract and Avenue and our uh, custom kitchen cabinet line covered bridge. Our brands bring in greater, better gross margins and we're not only improving the expansion of the brand, but we're improving the quality of the product within the brands. All of the products within our brands are self-developed by ourselves, all 100% designed by ourselves, our, our own employees, based uh, working with the product teams in each of the geographic regions and our, and our partners in Asia and Europe. We also look to um, continue to grow those brands. As we mentioned, uh, we'll look for bolt-on opportunities with other companies that can complement our brand goals. Let's talk about product. New product accounted for approximately 25% of sales in 2021. This is just a small sampling of some of the categories, our contract, our touchless flush toilet, our thermostatic shower valves, which we'll be launching this year, our encaustic tile shower walls, which you can see in two of those photos. Um, again. This is an ongoing process, and most likely, as we, as we progress, you're going to see more of our sales come from new products as we develop them. We'll talk about channel. We'll start with the e-commerce uh, channel. Currently, 21% of the group sales come from e-commerce. Uh, that's double digital organic growth rates for years to come is what we expect. We've established ourselves as a key supplier in the industry for e-com, not just because of our product and the value that we offer, because we understand how to serve an e-com customer from a logistics and distribution standpoint, and also understand how to package product that will arrive safely for the customer. We've also established a digital sales and data team, which has been critical to our understanding of the market. How many, what our competitors are doing, what's selling, design trends, and, and especially how we can take that information and give it to our product uh, and marketing departments to develop products going forward. Let's talk about channels with the commercial and geographic sales channels. I sort of mentioned we were a B2B business fo focused primarily on retail originally, but in the mid-2000s we branched out and started to expand our channel penetration into the uh, wholesale builders and contractors. This was no more evident than it was in Canada with our contract brand, which has become a leading brand to the wholesale and builder community in the Canada market. This is an undeveloped space 
still here in the United States with a long runway for us to grow out our commercial business. And you can see commercial went from 3 to 11 percent in the last 10 years. Geographically, we're looking for trusted partners around the globe. We we're going to focus primarily in Europe. We have a good example um, in Europe that we did several years ago in Germany. We hired a country manager. And what we were able to do is take our capital light model uh, that was already in place with our product development and our manufacturing, our sourcing that was already in place, and have that manager develop out programs for Germany and take a small and medium-sized market with less competition and grow it from zero to 15 million in less than 10 years. And maybe more importantly, incremental gross margin dollars uh, because of the light capital model that we had and then we had all the, the infrastructure in place already for Germany. We'll talk about our enhanced financial performance, margin improvement, our growth and efficiency plans expect to generate continued operating, operating margins as we move forward. I mentioned our ERP system, which is going to be a critical element for us um, as we've launched the company, uh, pub, went public this year, and we're going to be implementing that uh, ERP, ERP system shortly. We're a capital light model. We have very low capex needs to operate our business in all of our regions, um, outside of maybe some investment in um, Asia for, to support some of our manufacturing. Uh, we have a very low, low capex uh, need going forward. Efficient work, working capital planning. We have a lean inventory system uh, and a great logistics system in place that was no more evident than in COVID-19. Um, despite some hiccups, obviously, with deliveries and late shipments, we were able to see our customers through a very difficult time and continue to keep them in stock uh, throughout all the troubles. We run a very conservative balance sheet, and we focus on liquidity and, and reasonable leverage ratios. And we have a very, very strict return on capital discipline um, where any investments we make are going to be subject to a 20 plus percent expected return on capital hurdle rate. We talked about bolt on strategies. We'll talk about how we can efficiently uh, deploy capital. Uh, I, I mentioned earlier there's thousands of small suppliers in our industry. Uh, we have a lot of evergreen product lines and categories and geographies, and we're going to look for good companies. They don't necessarily have to be large. We're not looking for turnaround businesses. That's not what we're, in, we're, that, that's not what we're here for. Um, they need to fit with the core competence of what we do as a business. They need to complement our sales and distribution strategy, strategy within the market. Um, and obviously, all of those things even said, if the price is not right and they're not financially accretive, it won't matter. And those are the things that we want to uh, ensure as we look for these bolt-on opportunities. Again, the return on capital has to be greater than the cost, right? So that makes a lot of sense. We don't have a lot of actual experience with bolt-ons and acquisitions, but some examples that are, are, that are similar in nature. Uh, years ago, uh, we hired some people within the shower door industry. Uh, we brought them in and helped develop a shower door business that grew from zero to 3.4 million in gross profit in a very short time. The same with our custom kitchen business. We built a world-class plant over in Asia. We hired top-tier talent from some troubled um, US-based uh, kitchen companies, and now we are well positioned to, con we have an enormous runway out there for a high-end, very custom kitchen business going forward. Talk about the large addressable market. We, we see the market at um, about $150 billion total addressable market. And I mentioned earlier, we play primarily in that R&R &R market, which has seen consistent 3 to 5% growth year over year. Obviously, a lot of this is driven by the housing market, especially now with record low uh, inventory availability and continued price appreciation. We see that as a tailwind um, for large-scale remodels going forward. If you look on the right, uh, the kitchen market alone is a $76 billion market. Um, I apologize. The kitchen market, $76 billion. The kitchen cabinet business alone is an $18 billion market, and we are just getting started. So there's an enormous opportunity for us to penetrate the market going forward. On the bath side, an $82 billion market. We already play in seven of those 11 categories now. So there's, again, there's just enormous evergreen opportunity within each of the categories and also within the channels of distribution that we play in. Just to give you an idea, uh, with our main businesses today, our sanitary wear and our bathroom furniture, that business for us only represents about 0.4 basis points of market share. If we were to just get 0.4 basis points of market share in kitchens, and in uh, our shower systems business, that's another $100 million in incremental sales right there. That's just the beginning, but it'll give you an idea of how much opportunity we still have in the marketplace. This just quickly will give you an, uh, an overview of the R&R &R market on the left, how consistent it's been. 
outside of the Great Recession in the mid-2000s, uh, 3 to 5 percent annual growth average per year. And on the right, the Kitchen and Bath Association um, continues to have this survey that shows what customers feel are the most important rooms in the home. And as usual, the primary bath and the kitchen are number one. I won't spend too much time on Q4. Uh, we have a couple slides. It's, it's already been published, and you can find it on our website. But we had record, record revenue in the fourth quarter, um, year over year, 47% increase to $52 million, driven by pretty much all of our product categories, uh, primarily sanitary wear and bath furniture. Operating income was down slightly to year over year due to supply chain inflationary pressures, but we've mitigated a lot of that through pricing actions that we've taken. Uh, it'll take some time, there's some lag time for that to take effect, but we fully expect uh, by the time we get to the second half of 2022 to see that uh, margin expansion come back. Uh, we had $14.7 million worth of debt. That's mainly due to higher inventory levels due to, again, supply chain issues with a a backlog of orders that came in at the end of the year and the beginning of this year, but that should reverse itself in 2022, improving our free cash flow as we move forward. Uh, demand trends across repair and remodel remain favorable. We see strong demand for the most part everywhere in all of our product categories. There may be some short-term disruption due to supply chain, as we all have seen, but longer-term trends uh, overall for all of our product categories remain quite favorable. And as you know, the IPO, we completed our IPO on January 24th. Uh, the offering consisted of uh, two and a half million shares, um, a, a, an ordinary share and a warrant to purchase one ordinary share at a price of $6 a unit. We talked about supply chain. I won't spend too much time here, we're all aware. Uh, supply chain pressures will continue and have continued into 2022. There is an expectation to continue throughout the year. There may be some easing in the second half, but that's yet to be seen. Um, we have, like I said, we've mitigated a lot of the uh, cost pressures through pricing adjustments with our customers and ongoing con uh, cu discussions with our customers on, on making skew mix adjustments as well to lessen the impact of the pricing and the shipping delays. Um, we still expect strong end market demand. We're still seeing that. And uh, it's another reason why many of our customers and newer customers have come to us during this a very difficult time of uh, supply chain problems because we've been a reliable partner for many, many years. And again, I won't, I won't spend a lot of time on this. Just, just reviews a little bit more in detail the Q4 results I spoke about so you can see for um, revenue was up, obviously gross profit was up. The operating margin, like I mentioned in Q4 was down. For the year was up those 6.3 to 7.8 million and the earnings per share for the year were at 90 cents a share. Business line results, if you look at uh, the key categories I discussed, sanitary wear, bath furniture, and that other, which is our emerging categories, all, all had a great year. Uh, the, uh, the emerging categories, as you can see, nearly doubled their business um, in 2021 versus 2020. Our financial outlook, again, this has been published uh, on, our, on our earnings call. We're looking at about a range of 182 to 189 million for revenue, an operating income of six and a half to seven and a half million and net income about five to six million. So what does that wrap up to? Let's talk about the key characteristics uh, and why to invest in, in FGI. Um, we are a trusted global supplier. We have partnerships around the world with our suppliers and with our customers. Uh, we call them sticky relationships. We've been, a, we've been a supplier to many of our customers for a very long time. Um, and we have been trusted by some of them uh, for over 30 years. We have strong organic growth uh, at our fingertips. Our BPC strategy is going to focus on continuing to build out our brands, our products, and our channels, which has been key and will be key going forward for our organic growth uh, plan. We have enhanced spin-off profitability. What do we mean by that? We've been part of a larger company for many years and many, many times sort of had our hands tied as to how, we, how fast we can grow and how we can invest. Now that we're public, we can move full speed ahead. So the sales and marketing teams are ready to rock and we're moving ahead with all of our strategies, especially as it relates to, to the BPC strategy. We talked about bolt-ons. We will engage in selective bolt-ons, possibly some that are large if they make sense and if those opportunities clear our uh, return on capital hurdle rates as we discussed. And finally, we have strong uh, shareholder alignment. We have a very high insider ownership based from the parent company. Um, they have a lot 
of uh, alignment with us and their interests in us are, are great. They, we buy, obviously, 25% of our product from our parent company factory. So there's a great synergy between the parent company and FGI going forward to grow. And what you'll see here, again, this is all published information, but this is just give you a three-year history of our revenues, our margins, our operating profit. And you can see that our revenues have grown from 126 million in 2019 to 181 million in 2021. And that's really it. Any questions? If not, thank you very much.